Phil, are we gonna try some new spring items? We'll, we'll set you up, we'll set you up. Is there really any chrysanthemum Hua Cha flavor in this? Dude, you squeeze it, you can just see the cream busting out. You got friends, see, Nell knows everybody, I told you. Alright, so we had to go back to LA for a few days and you know what we had to do. We're going to all the newest food spots in the West Coast Asian food haven, the 626. Let me know in the comments down below if we missed any spots. Until then, hit that like button and let's go. Alright everybody, the Fun Bros are back in the 626 a year later here with none other than Nelly Nell Chan, Man. of course. And we gotta check out all the new restaurants that have opened up because the food scene out here is crazy, of course. You know that we know that. And the first spot is the all-you-can-eat A5 Wagyu Chubby Cattle on Garvey in Monterey Park. Man, I'm so excited because they got caviar, they got Wagyu sandwiches. Let's go, man. And seafood. All right, so we're here, we got some appetizers, and I wanna tell you real quick about the price of me, because they got two different, three, three different uh, dinners that you can get. You can get the $59 per person, but the deluxe, the $88, comes with this box right here, which Daniel's gonna open up for us. So Daniel, please show us what Garvey's all about now. Oh my God. Ooh. Bro, that's like opening the suitcase what in is one it of though? those. What is it? You can, you can, can you tell us what we have? A5 tendon meat, A5 otoro, A5 otoro, A5 otoro, Guys, these are all A5 and then this is Wagyu. Yes, I'm not Wagyu. Oh my gosh, guys, this is, so this is actually part of the Expot group family. So Expot, if you know, they have spots in Vegas, very fancy, but I'll tell you this, for $88, everything you're getting here is insane. All right, starting off with the apps, I gotta start with this Wagyu sandwich that comes with the $88. What are you starting with now? Man, I got the salmon carpaccio, beef tartare, shrimp tempura. We got a variety of mm. sweet shrimp, Thai shrimp. You know, you got the nigiris. Bro, you taking too long, I'm already eating. Oh man, going in. Mm. If you look at this plate right here, they have lobster tail with garlic and abalone. Let's try this. Lobster tail? Oh, garlic oh, lobster. You gotta cook it, bro. Oh. You gotta cook it, you don't eat it raw. Oh. I don't know, I was like, what are you oh, doing? Oh, 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 my bad. Say, I almost ate it raw, straight yeah. up. <laughs> All right. Let's get on with the sushi, though. Bro, the sushi's good. Okay. Sushi's good. Do a little wasabi on the top. Oh. Toro. Mmm. To get this level of sushi and yaki niku barbecue in Monterey Park for this price, it's crazy. All right, guys, this is the raw shrimp section. This is the Thai raw shrimp. I got the sweet raw shrimp. Mmm. Delicate flavor, man. Most people don't wouldn't tell you to eat raw shrimp, but when it's high quality, you can. Five Wagyu, let's do it. Bro, super soft, melts in your mouth, man. Bro. I don't even want to eat anything with it because it's so good, but they do have some Korean side dishes, some panchan. Mmm. Yo. What I think is really cool about Chubby Cattle is that it's actually owned by Chinese, but there's so many Japanese and Korean influences, so it's kind of a mixture of all three. Yeah. So it's kind of like this trifecta, and it really works because I think in previous, you know, I guess like Yakiniku, Korean barbecue spots, fusion spots, it's kind of weird, but I think people are really figuring out kind of how to fuse everything together, and it all makes sense. Like A5, Panchan, with sushi, and, and, and like Chinese flavors and dips. Oh my god. Tempura too? Oh, whoo. Now, what do you got there though? I got the premium Wagyu cube, and lobster I, garlic tail. And I got this little abalone, guys. The abalone used to be that thing at the Chinese buffet that you could only get limited of one of, but here you can have as many as you want and it's grilled. Shout out to all the mamas and yeah yeahs out there because they would, I think they go crazy for this one. Mmm. Mm. So good, man. 
I know the Miyazaki cube itself is not all you can eat, but that was a five out of five bite. 100 out of 100. The most fattiest part of the Wagyu is the Otoro. It's kind of like the sushi terms, like Otoro sushi is the most fattiest sushi, but I mean, I guess it's the same. Beef sushi. And hey, you like the fatties? <laughs> Gosh darn it now, behave yourself. One thing to remember when you're cooking these thin cuts of fatty Wagyu is that they can kind of stick if you let them cook too long. So really, they're not gonna cook for very long, guys. Keep flipping them. Oh, that one's done. This one's done too, even though we got a little bit of red on there, I'd do it. All right, and of their most special meats, guys, I have the A5 Miyazaki ribeye with a little bit of raw egg dip. I got the Miyazaki top blade. Whoa, lay that on, baby. So after this is grilled, and I'm not gonna grill it for very long, I'm about to dip it in this raw egg, and that's how you're supposed to eat it, guys. Trust me, that's the first time you've probably ever seen that. It's cooking fast. Miyazaki blade. Hey guys, one quick thing. These pieces are so fatty that if you put all the pieces in the middle to cook, the fat will drip and maybe make the flame a little bit larger than you want. So keep them on the side. Oh man, we are finishing up here at our all you can eat festivities at Chubby Cattle, but we're ending off with some Argentine prawns. These things are gigantic. You got some seasoned scallops that are about to cook in the shell, and you got a little ribeye. Bang, bang. Guys, for $88, the deluxe version, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite the deal. I say check it out. Glad to see the new stuff on Garvey, but we got a lot more spots to go. All right, next new spot in the 626 is not a new spot, but they got new menu items for the spring, and we're gonna cover it, and we might see the owner in there, Phil Wang. I'm here with Nelson Chan, let's go. No, yeah, yeah, no, just food stuff, food no, stuff, food, no stuff. food stuff, food stuff, food stuff. Why can't we just paint us up, Dude, I will say, no, no, Phil, look at Phil's outfit real quick. Oh, David, back up, back up. This yeah, is, no, this is from San uh, Diego. Yellow, 2003. This is from Yellow Fever. San Diego Phil Wang right here. That's crazy, like these are literally like my high school jeans and I took them out. And it's okay now. He is back. Guys, uh, Phil, are we gonna try some new spring items? We'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll set you up, we'll set you up. <laughs> All right, we're here with Phil Wang, the owner of Ball Pomo 4. You guys are co -owner, co -owner. Co -owner. <laughs> You guys are expanding. You guys got up to four locations. You got one in San Diego opening San right now? San Diego's now? opening, and then we have a fourth. Yeah, that's also wow. Maybe even a fifth pretty soon. Wow, you heard it here first, guys. Watch this video, hit it, and give it a thousand likes. Anyways, let's check out some of the spring items, man, because I love how you guys are always innovating yes. your food. Because as much as you guys got innovative drinks, as much as you guys are a boba shop, you guys are much more than a boba shop. For sure. We're, we definitely, I feel like, transcended just a boba shop. Talk about it, because this so is some. These are our high end chicken tacos. We actually launched these last summer. And it's high end chicken with um, ginger scallion. Oh, sauce. Just, just, Dude, now, just, just let's just grab them right here. We just got to try it as you speak. Canto man, canto, oh, guys. Canto. As a Canto kid, we make we make our we make our like chicken in house. Also, okay. There's a crispy rice in there. You're gonna love it. It's All right, let's just try it. Hainan chicken tacos. I've never had it. Initially, it doesn't sound like it's gonna have a lot of flavor. Dude, are you kidding me? No, I'm just saying because it's a Hainan chicken. You know what? Oh god. Okay. You got oh all. gosh. You gotta get the red, the, the sweet chili. So this is kind of like a. It's Some like, Hainan chicken Kalmun guy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's your rice Kanto. plate. It's your rice plate. Huh? How, you, how you say this in Kanto? I don't know how to say taco. Hoilan. Hoilan gai fan, right? Gai. Hoilan. Bao. Gai ba. Moshi ga bao. So there's a crispy mm. fried chicken rice in there to give it yeah. that rice element. That was good. Yeah. Uh, wow. No, yeah, it's a lot of flavor. A lot. And you know what's funny? It does, it does give you that vibe. It, it, it does. It, it, it does. It gives you enough of that Hainan chicken like experience. Wow. Guys, LA, you're doing tacos, of course, makes sense. What do you think, uh, yo? <clears throat> Fabulous. Right, I love it. On. What, what do we got here? Here, let me get you a napkin over here. Okay, okay. All right, so this is, uh, we just- Oh, by the way, I want to get shout out to the tortillas. They weren't like dry or anything. Yeah, yeah. Those were good. Um, we, we, uh, all right, so this is, 
our egg, tomato egg salad roll. Wow, David, you gotta try this because David's one of David's favorite dishes of all time is fan chen That's chao Exactly, fan chen chao dan, scrambled egg, tomato egg. Oh, you said it all Taiwanese. I know. <laughs> fan chen chao But then we put it in this roll that's kind of like um, uh, like when you get like a, go to like a Taiwanese bakery, but right. then also the egg salad, Got you. which is like kind of like. You know, I thought it was a lobster roll at first. So we it, we wanted that look. Wow. We wanted that look. Uh, no, if you want to grab one, yeah, all, right, yeah. all right, I'm gonna pour. Uh, David, David, you're gonna try this later. I'm gonna pour some small on. Yeah. You know what? Let me eat it first. Okay, okay. Ooh, nice. So it's both a little like, sweet. Yeah, the the tomato tomato relish like right there. I like that. Ooh, right, right at the top, right there. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, that's a got a big bite. <laughs> wow, one bite, man. No, no, I feel. Yeah. I'd like for you to try it with some small. Oh, for sure. Please. For sure. I have smala like on my like dining table, like permanently. It's always like always there, ready to go. Let me try. Let me try. So yeah, we got yeah, messy. Uh, this was a little messy, but you know when you go to like Asian convenience stores or Chinese bakeries, you have the egg salad yeah. sandwich in the in the cooler. We kind of wanted to homage to that. I love it. So much nostalgia in your guys' food, man. Mm. Oh yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Great. Good. How yeah. similar to Hon honestly, mm. egg, egg with like hot sauce is yeah. always hits, man. I would say yeah. Let's keep it going. <clears throat> All right, this one, your premier item. Right. I would say that this is our beef noodle soup dip. Okay, sandwich. So it's you like kind of like your Nero beef. man. It's like so it's like so it's literally the Chinese braised beef. And then um, Taiwanese beef noodle soup broth. So it's like birria, it's like a French dip. We got harbati cheese in there, crispy onions. Dude, this uh, is a birria neuro man yeah. dip sandwich. Exactly. Too crazy, man. It does not exist anywhere else. All right, guys. Hey, bop bop mofo. Ooh. Yeah, <clears throat> that, broth, that broth hits, right? Very fragrant. Cause you know, Taiwanese beef noodle soup, it's also very fragrant. I love it, man. The yeah. herbs are in there. Yeah, just you can even just drink the broth by itself. I was thinking about doing that. Yeah, actually. No, you, like, you totally can. I love beef noodle soup. I just want to like yeah, a little bit, a little bit like, heat, uh -huh. a little heat. Mm. Actually, the smaller would be really good with this because of the beef. Try and smaller on it. So we make we make the braised beef in house also. Yo, Bro. Anyone in New York doing this? Anyone? In, you, you guys eat a lot. All right, once we release this video, <laughs> don't be mad if someone else makes one of these dishes, but hey. you saw it here first. Hey, I'm, not, what, I'm not trademarking it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're not owning the Taiwanese beef noodle soup? Are you swear? <laughs> but we may be one of the first, or very early at least, to do, uh, to do the sandwich dip. Uh, Always a pioneer of everything. And no wonder, and I mean, we could talk on and on about like business and what you've learned through this whole process, expanding, yeah. operating. But I will tell you this, a spot that does good drinks and good hot food is way harder and way more difficult than a spot that just does good drinks. I, and so, I, I'm so glad you said that. Like, I wish more people knew that. People, are, all, people are always like, hey, why don't you guys open up faster? I'm like, dude, it's because we got food here too. Yeah. Right? No, I, I drink this all the time. I'll say all right, all right, all right, guys. All right, so let's try some of their spring drinks. So this is our lychee berry bliss. It's um, lychee juice, calamansi juice. Oh yeah, yeah, you push that down. Uh, coconut milk, strawberry. Super, super refreshing. Yeah. What the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said what? Oh, uh, I almost oh. cursed <laughs> around Phil Wang. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all real ingredients too. We don't use any syrup. That's really good. Yeah. Oh shit. Let me, let me help you mix this. This is our rose syrup. We use real rose petals. Have you guys been to Malaysia and had the um, syrup lamao? Yeah. So, it's like, so this is like our syrup lamao. It's real rose, lime juice, and sparkling Dude, water. they love rose oh. in Southeast Asia and South yeah. Asia. Wow. They love it. There you go. So, and let me mix this for you too. This is our hoji corn right here. Hoji cha with corn juice. And latte. And, 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 yeah. and lactose free milk. Oh. Guys, by the way, Bopo is one of the first people to start doing the corn lattes and stuff. So. <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna say anything, but I think that's the oh, best corn latte I had in this video. Oh, so refreshing. Nice. It's the hoji cha. You got that Yo, roast, roasted hoji so cha. Man, uh, come to Paul Paul. Come to any of their locations. Their fourth one's opening. No, third. Uh, third. third one's opening. Check out their menu, their drinks. Cool place. Phil is literally behind the counter <laughs> serving it. So you know it's on point because listen, if the owner goes 
onto the location. Yeah. At least you know that's gonna be on point. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I want to so, make sure everyone has a great experience. I gotta ask you guys a question because we've been now doing these videos for like sure. five years now. Sure. Do you realize yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. We're we've still doing all, food videos been, sometimes. Well, I'm saying no. Like, did you ever think five years ago that you would, that we would still be? Hitting up this place that we'd still be open. We, we hit our yeah. five year anniversary. Yeah, time really flies. Are you are you saying if I are you asking me if I believed in you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do. You ran Wong Fu. No. That's still running and that's it's true. high quality. That's so true. you know. I, I just think it's crazy that we're still we're still like because you guys are always checking out new spots and I feel very grateful yeah. that we're still here as part of your free yeah. tours. The cameras look around. different though. That's true. So anyways, <laughs> all right guys. Uh, uh, man, shout out to all the new items here at Bopo. Check them out. As you know, sometimes it gets super crazy. There's a line and everything, but yeah, maybe you'll catch Phil here. Thanks, guys. On to our next spot. See ya. Our next new spot in the 626 is Sujita Ramen, and uh, they're coming out from West LA, Sautel. That was, you know, the Sautel version is my favorite ramen I've pretty much ever had. Well, people in the 626 literally used to drive from Alhambra or San Gabriel all the way to Sautel, which is an hour and a half away just to get Sujita. So for them to open up one in the heart of the 626, West 626, is pretty cool. Let's check it All out. All right, man. Do they have the spicy suka, man? Listen, guys, you're looking at Sujita LA, but it's actually Sujita San Gabriel. Ooh. We've got the karage, we've got takoyaki, we've got gyoza. Oh, these look very high quality. Let me spray some lemon. Lime. As you can see, you've got the, uh, the wavy heat dashi, which is actually uh, bonito flakes. And then guys, here we have the spicy tuna bowl. Let me just take a bite here because I, I, I ordered this for myself. Mmm. Oh, lots of sesame, lots of spice. I like that. Gyoza. Here, how's the karage? A level karage. Here I have the Sukumen Deluxe. Go for it. And I'm gonna squeeze some of the lime on top first. Look at these fat pieces of pork belly right there. Ooh, that chashu is huge. I mean, look, beautiful. Thick cut and everything. Here I have the sukumen, super hot, piping hot. Let me pull it out. Guys, I remember the first time I ate Sujita over in Sautel, maybe like eight years ago. It was the best I ever had. So let's see if SG. That might be the best Sukumen in 626, man. It looks good. I mean, listen, look guys, you got the uh, soy injected uh, soft boiled egg. It's good, it's good, David. David, you go, go, go oh, get the man. ramen too, man. They're playing their Yoshida brothers in the background. This is like a very Japanese experience. You got the Akira shirt on yeah, here. Yeah, he, just watch out, you might splatter that. Oh, sukumen off the plate. Um, what I think is really cool about sukumen is like it actually, you think it's not gonna make that big of a difference since you dip it into the thick broth, but honestly, it's kind of a different experience because the noodles are cold and chilled, but then the, the tonkatsu is hot. Big piece of wasabi. Gyoza, let's see if their gyoza is any better than the other spots. Mm. Oh, they put a little bit of lao gama on it. Ooh. Oh, good. As you can see, guys, they offer a regular tonkatsu option as well in the deluxe. Um, the meat is cut differently. The noodles are thinner. Obviously, there's a lot more broth. Ooh. And uh, not everybody likes sukumen. Like, some people really like it. Some people think the sukumen broth is not hot enough, but tonkatsu always going to deliver. Oh, that tonkatsu broth is so... Thick, bro, I can't see through it. Oh my god! I cannot see through that. A ton of green scales on top. Let's get it with a piece of pork. A little bit of chashu. I feel like that's a different part of the pig, maybe. Ooh, that was a thinly sliced chashu. Come on, David. Which one should people get here? Should they get the sukumen or the ramen? Which men? Oh, yo, let me go in. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Normally. Eight out of ten times I pick Superman over regular just because I think the funness of it. For this one, I'm gonna pick the regular ramen. I might have to put some of this Takana in there. Ooh, a little spicy. Oh, as you can see, I got the Takana in there. It's kind of changed the complexion of the broth a little bit. Noodles, scallions, pork, 
my favorite. What do you pick, bro? Everybody's got decisions in life. I think the decision you need to make is never a wrong one here, but if you're gonna start one off, get the ramen first. Wow, and they're known for the sukumen too. Wow, that's... They're hey, known for the hey, sukumen. listen guys. No, these, I, if I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, First I'm of all, I still love Sujita. Still some of the best ramen you can get in all of LA. And you don't even gotta go to Westside anymore. You can just stay home in the SGV. I remember for a while, Andrew, the ramen in 6 through 6 was kind of like a 6 out of 10. So it's really good to see it jump up to 8 out of 10. Sujita, SG, the new standard for the 6 through 6. And of course, you have to end the meal with some Sujita matcha pudding. Ah, that looks so cool. Wow. Makes me want to say arigato gozaimasu. Sugoi, yosh. Listen guys, everybody has heard of Yunnan Mi Fun, but you probably have never heard of Jiangxi Mi Fun. Pop it up on a map right now. You're looking at a chrysanthemum noodle soup with chicken slices in it. Huhua. That means there's actual flowers to make this broth. And then of course we've got the beef and kimchi over here. A little bit more fusion, it's 2024, everybody's doing new stuff. Listen guys, I know what you're thinking. Is there really any chrysanthemum hua cha flavor in this? It's there, but it's subtle. But this has a really, really nice texture to it. And it has a slight, almost like tea-like flavor to the broth, but it's very, very slight. But you know what, for me, I've never had Jiangxi Mi Fun or Jiangxi anything, so this is the first time. They told me, So, like we said, man, first time having Jiangxi noodles, man. I'll probably never go to Jiangxi in my entire life, so this is good to get the noodles. All right, so here we got the kimchi one, and I do like how they come in these cool little pots. It kind of gives me some like Thai or like Indian vibes, you know, with like the reddish gold tin pot. But anyways, guys, obviously, you know, when it comes to Yunnan Mi Shan, it's one of those soups that not a lot of Chinese Americans grew up eating as a kid, unless your parents were from this region. But as a Cantonese person, I like noodle soups, and this is probably the trendiest Chinese one, you know. And they got a kimchi version, you know, they're always gonna, because kimchi is just honestly a popular flavor. So let me try this. A little bit of ham, sliced beef. This sliced beef is uh, pretty much like your average like Nero, like Nero, Nero Mian beef. Let me try one more. Best compliment to some piping hot noodle soup. Mm. All right, so our next new spot in the 626 is actually a Korean owned coffee shop that is joining Sunung Dong and Young Dong Tofu House to kind of create this little Korean strip in the 168 Market Plaza in San Gabriel. We're gonna go check it out. They're doing a whole bunch of stuff, infusing Korean flavors and Asian flavors, yuzu, sesame, in their coffee. Let's go. All right, Chris, what do we got here? Yeah, so we have the Tiger Latte here and a sweet corn latte on his left. Uh -huh. uh, the Tiger Latte here is a brown with caramel uh, drink. Uh, we froth it out so it's a little bit more airy. Oh, very airy, very yeah, smooth. Very smooth, that's what we want. And then the sweet corn latte. Micro bubbles, I like it. The sweet corn latte here is a sweet corn milk with uh, sweet corn foam, and we top it off with an espresso. Uh, we recommend that you first sip it so you're able to get through all the layers of the drink, and after that, you can sip it before you like it. Well, why, why do you think it works, though? What's your opinion? Uh, I think it works because people want some just some good old coffee is some Korean inspired, something sweet, but something that's not too sweet, that just overpowers the coffee itself. And I think some people just want really good specialty coffee. All right, I gotta ask you, yeah. Koreans, they do amazing fried chicken, amazing corn dogs, and now coffee, what's next? We'll see. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> entertainment is big right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of K-dramas out there, and yeah. Dude, I, I think uh, Korean, um, uh, 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 what's something super American, hot dogs? The corn dogs? Yeah. Oh, that, hot dogs. The hot dogs. Specifically. Specifically hot dogs. All right, uh, Korean hot dogs. I'll see, we'll see you next. I think it's really cool that Koreans are able to tie in their flavors into a lot of like Americana products, whether it's the corn dog, whether it's fried chicken, now coffee. You know, if you've been to Seoul, and I have, 
there's so many coffee shops out there. So I think it's really cool that they're mixing like all the Korean snacks and desserts into their coffee. And I'd say a lot of it works. Banana milk, banana milk in a coffee makes sense because it's milk. So anyways, guys, I'm excited to see what else they come up with. But uh, yeah, Smoking Tiger in San Gabriel, coffee shops in the 626. So I'm at the new Coco's location in the 168 Plaza, right down from Smoking Tiger. So you got a new boba shop, but Coco's is not a new boba shop. It is obviously a traditional chain from Taiwan, which I actually always liked, but at least they got some new looks in their restaurants, uh, I mean, in their boba shops. Here we got an Osmanthus Floral Latte. Mm. It's a cold one with uh, whipped cream and a little bit of nuts on top. Let's go. Mm. Always love to see Coco's, you know, evolving and doing new things because, you know, it's considered one of the OG boba brands in America, but, you know, they gotta stay updated. And when it comes to cheap boba in America, I mean, I think that, first of all, this was about 580 after tax, so, is this considered cheap? Well, it was definitely considered premium at a time, but now that price is considered fairly cheap because if you want to get a decorated, cool boba right now, it's probably anywhere from seven to eight dollars. But anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I think cheap boba is always gonna have its place. I think Coco's is still expanding. They're still doing well, but they're not gonna be considered a premium Taiwan chain. They're definitely on the cheaper end. So shout out to cheap boba, man. There's always a space for cheap anything, you know? as much as prices are going up. All right, everybody, our next new spot in the 626 is Hong Kong Dim Sum House. Hong Kong Dim Sum. Hey, we're here with Nelly Nell, the 626 Prince. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna go in here because this is actually a different concept. This is not something that you order off a menu or a cart. You're gonna order at the front. Hey, hey what's, what's up? up? Oh. Oh, see? Okay. See? Uh, you got yeah, friends. See, Nell knows everybody. I told you. Oh, no, you good. You good. Oh, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Hey, man. David, this man. is your spot? Yeah. Uh, I kind of. I remember who put you out on him. Yeah. So, can, can you could you quickly tell us about, like, what? It's like fast fast food dim sum? <laughs> Fast food dim sum? Yeah. I don't know about fast food. Well, I mean, like, you know, it's fast dim sum, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you want to guys know? It's, it's good, it's fast. Yeah. Hey, it's good and it's fast. Yeah. Let's check it out. I think it's really cool is that I feel like there's been a lot of different waves of how to eat dim sum in America. Like, growing up, it was everything was off the cart. And then it kind of moved upscale and everybody was only ordering off menus. But now I think people realize, like, affordable cheap dim sum is still really good and like it could be steaming right here so essentially this is like a big dim sum cart that just stays still so that's why this concept makes a lot of sense to me i always was okay with affordable dim sum and you know fast dim sum so i think this is how dim sum was traditionally eaten to be honest so so of course you got there your essentials here your siumai your hakao and then the sinjuku which is one of my favorite dim sum dishes ever Yo, Nell, no. yeah. this type of food, you saw it in China a lot, right? Like the way of serving it. Yeah, this is a very popular, you know, style of, you know, food in China because it's like, you know, like you talked about dim sum, you see it like in the carts, but I think what it originally is from, like, me stand outside on the street, right. you know? Like, besides it, besides it being in the restaurant, this is, it could be like a street food. Right. Yeah, it is essentially like, a I mean, you're talking about it's a lot of It's easy on the go, especially in Hong Kong too. Hong Kong, a lot of people, you know, very fast paced, they need to go mm. to work. They see one of these, you know, uh, uh, dim sum stands on the street, grab a couple items and just eat it on the go. And you know what's funny? Now, do you feel this way where it seemed like everybody was trying to open up a fancy dim sum spot, everything you had to order off a menu, but I think really the beginnings of dim sum are a humble, it just started on the trade routes during the Song Dynasty like a thousand years ago. You know, and it was just like people sitting down to have tea, to take a yep, break. Yep. And that's what this is, I feel like, going to, back to the roots of. Like, to be honest, in a weird way, this might be like the most traditional no, you know, dim sum spot. This feels way more like home than if you were to go to like, you know, those fancy, you know, dim sum seafood restaurants. Like mm. you said, ordering off a menu where the prices are like three to four times more than what they're supposed to be like. Back to the basics. It's there, fresh, steaming. If you want a dim sum fix, this is a great option. We gotta try the bowl up out. Ooh, they warmed it up for you. It's soft. Mmm. Mmm. Hong Kong dim sum. Next up on brand new things in the 626, we've got a mom and pop shop called With Love. 
Nell, they're doing Taiyaki's. We've seen it before from major chains from Korea. Somi yep, Somi, yep. right? Somi Somi was one of the bigger ones. But but look at this, look at this. They got some of the savory flavors like Maza Dog. They got that uh, bubble sausage, like grilled tapoki with the uh, small little smoky links. Let's check it out. Real quick, um, can you tell me what is the Sotak flavor? So Sotak is gonna be a popular street food in Korea. It's actually made of sausage and rice cake put together. It's, we put that inside the taiyaki with the gochujang drizzle um, to kind of imitate that flavor and try to bring it back. All right, you guys, Sotak inside of a taiyaki. Essentially, some people call it, you know, sausage bubble on a stick. That sounds crunchy. This is a fusion of two trending foods right now. Obviously, taiyaki has been trending in you know uh, Japan for like decades, but I'm telling you, this sausage bubble was trending from South Korea. They combined it together, so now you get the bubble sausage inside a taiyaki. I just think it's a really creative idea. I never, I never had this hot dog and mozzarella in a taiyaki. Oh, I don't. Know. It's not a sausage. Gochujang. Oh, and they got the goju jong in it. That's different. All right, our next new spot in the 626 is Bay Poke. It also has kimbap. Yo, do you eat kimbap? Oh man, I ate it a lot back in the day because you know I'd be hanging out with the Koreans. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nelson, my friend, would you partake in this kimbap with me? Absolutely. Can we break kimbap together? Guys, I think it's really cool. First of all, I'm a big fan of kimbap. It's always like a really good snack. I personally think it's a great way to eat like all this type of panchan food. I like it better than uh, bibimbap actually in the stone bowl. So here, we got a lot of different stuff. I think we have some spinach, we have some egg, we have some calamari, some uh, the root, the murdoch and stuff like that. So let's go. Hey, please. What is that? It's sesame oil. Oh. You know, sometimes we like to get extra sesame oil inside because Koreans and Chinese both love sesame oil. Yo, cheers. Mmm. What I like about it, it's very light, easy to eat, you know, and it's healthy. Yeah, and honestly, it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's always cold. Yeah. This is machine cut kimbap, by the way. They have a literal machine that's cutting it. So anyways, guys, more Korean concepts in the 626. Yo, another new concept in the 626 is not a new one. You've probably heard of it, Paris Baguette, but this one's new in the San Gabriel Plaza right here off Las Tunas. Thank you, good. Kamsamida. All right, so, Guys, uh, Paris Baguette, obviously, you know, that and Tout Le Jour, my two favorite bakeries. But I will say Tout Le Jour generally, you know, ekes it out a little bit in my opinion. But let's check out what they got here at pa Paris Baguette. Raspberry almond croissant. They have a flattened croissant. This is like where they just... Like that. And then, uh, yeah, all this other stuff. So let me grab a couple buns and then... Uh, ooh, buffalo chicken croissant pizza. Yo. Paris Baguette always inventing new things, man. Even though things that like Western bakeries don't want to do. Oh man, it's fire. Wow. Wow. The taste is on point. The texture is fluffy. And they'll warm it up for you. All right, everybody. We know it's not really a competition because you got to have that growth mindset in 2024. But which one do you prefer? The Chinese style bakeries, kind of like your 85 C's or your Paris Baguette to Le Jour? Because there's always a, you know, we always have like debates with Korean friends and shout out to Worst Asian Podcast. They always have this debate as well. I will say this, Korean bakeries, they're killing it right now. They're definitely more French, but they're like more fun French spots. So while I think a lot of great French bakeries are keeping it very traditional in 2024, trying to bring bread back to the basics, I mean, Paris Baguette has no limits. Fluffy, slightly sweet, just how Asians like it. Fluffy bread is back, y'all. All right, next new Asian concept is Old Fairy Donut. Now, the interesting thing about this spot, Nelson, it started in Seoul, Korea in 2016, inspired by New York donut shops. So wow. shout out to New York City. New York. It is a vibe in here. It's a vibe. They did a great job with the decor. It really transports you back to like a 19, I would say 70s diner with the brown and orange. Look up at all the, you know, kind of old timey fonts and stuff. They did a good job. 
Like, uh, are you, uh, you brought this over from Korea or they have other spots in, in LA? Oh yeah, we have uh, four more locations in the uh, United States. This uh, franchise is from South Korea. Cool. Then uh, we have uh, Buena Park, the first location, and uh, Cerritos, and the K-Town in LA. Cool. And then this is the fourth location, and then we have a Torrance location too. What, what would you say uh, sets you guys apart from other donut shops? Uh, it's like, you know, very uh, more fluffy, and then uh, more uh, soft, and then uh, it's handmade, everything handmade. Fluffy donuts, you had me at there. Say no more, guys. Right, Old what, what fairy donuts. What did we say about 2024? About being fluffy. It is the year, the decade of the fluffy. Let's go. <laughs> Paris baguette is fluffy. Fluff. Old fairy is fluffy. Let's, Let's check out the donuts. We got the tiramisu and the pistachio. Nell, which one do you want to go on? Pistachio. Okay, I did want the tiramisu, <laughs> but I was gonna let you choose first. How nice of you. Guys, what I think is so cool is that like a lot of Korean concepts are kind of like doing their take on Americana, whether it's corn dogs, you got uh, donuts, you got pretty much bakeries, you got diners. So I think like Japanese people, they kind of did that too, but they didn't really like make the chains that would come to America. So I now I think the time is right. So shout out to all these Korean chains. Cheers. Mmm. Oh man, when he said fluffy, he wasn't kidding. It's so fluffy. Dude. And I think there's there's cream inside there's this. Cream inside, yeah. There's cream inside the tiramisu one. Look. Yeah, I got you, brother. Boom. Wow. Dude, you squeeze it, you can just see the cream busting out. Come on, now. <laughs> Sorry. We're all grown ups here. No, that's Come on. <laughs> this is a really strong flavor, you know. Very fluffy Americana donuts. All right, and they give you that vibe too, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this music is like. All right, see so we have this mint white chocolate milk, guys, shake before you serve. Uh, I don't know if they're taking after a donut shop in Canada, maybe with the milk bags. I'm just kidding. This is more of a modern thing to do. Uh, out, take it out of the carton, you know what I mean? But everything else about this spot kind of has like a throwback aesthetic, you know, from the, like the 1970s. Cheers. Cheers, man. What do you have? I have strawberry. And you also have pistachio on your face. Ha <laughs> ah. ha! I didn't tell you that before we started filming. All right. That was good. Whoa. Have you ever melted mint chocolate ice cream and then mixed it with milk? This Bro, is what, what it is. Tastes like? You ever, when you're a kid, you have those in that Chinese snack, yan yams? Yeah. The sticks with the strawberry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is what it tastes yeah. like. Yeah, yam yams. Yeah, yeah, what yam, yam yams. Yam strawberry flavor, but in the milk. My insulin spiking. The aroma. All right, so real quick, could you tell me what these are? Oh yeah, this is the pink guava lime green tea. This one's a grapefruit brulee green tea, and then this one's a alisan lime matzo tea. All right, cool. Listen, guys, they're like grilling their fruits here. They're taking stuff from the mixology, like mixologists drink alcohol world, but applying it to bobas here at Formosa Aroma. Listen, guys, there's always high things in the boba world, mid things, low things. I think Formosa Aroma is on the high end. Listen guys, we're in the 626 where they have Lady M Cakes. It was started by a Japanese lady in the upper west side of Manhattan and it's uh, gone global all over Asia. This is a seasonal strawberry squirrel flavor, very Japanese. In my opinion, they had lavender matcha in there too and they had popcorn, but listen guys, these are heavy cakes. I'm only gonna try one for you guys today. Let's try strawberry, I never had fruit in one. Listen guys, I've had about 10, maybe 15 flavors of Lady M cake. This strawberry swirl, along with durian, is gonna go in my top three. Tastes very, very much like a Japanese strawberry chocolate. Listen guys, we are at Sun Mary, Sun Mary, at the Arcadia Mall. And this is a Daofu Min Bao. Daofu Bao. Daofu Bao. And you guys know all about my Bao's, you know? Listen, you can just make bread out of anything, guys. Uh, you are looking here at a boba cream puff from Sun Mary. 
Oh, oh. Uh, you got some cream on your lips, bro. <laughs> uh, here I got the pound cake, fluffy pound cake, you know, but with some, um, what's it called on there? You know why it's different? Because they made the classic Cantonese angel food cake pound cake, but with Hokkaido milk. Oh. From, from well, how do you even open Hokkaido. It? Oh, and, the, and there's cream in it. I've never seen that, man. This is this is the, the evolution of the cake that your mom and your grandma eats. Some Mary. We are in what might be the most Asian mall in America, Westfield Santa Anita, and I'm telling you, I'm in front of a Filipino-owned bake shop doing strawberry matcha baked supreme croissants based off Lafayette Bakery from New York City. Boom, boom, matcha on the inside, strawberry on the outside. Now what you got? I hear I got a pandan cake. Pandan pound cake. Pound cake. Right, pound. Man. Junie's baked. Strawberry with matcha and a supreme croissant. You're not gonna see that in New York City, only here in the 626. Pandan cake, very moist, very fluffy. Don't really taste much of the pandan though. That's the thing with pandan. Sometimes you gotta like triple yeah. down on it just yeah. to get the vibe. But hey, listen man, Filipino owned, they're gonna open one in West Covina. I like it. What you are looking at is quite possibly the only 99 Ranch that is inside of a Westfield Mall or here in Arcadia. There's the 99 Ranch right there, Nelson. You've been there before, I haven't, but here's their bakery. They have Kong Kong Gaidan Zai, AKA Egg Waffles. And then over here, they have baked purple yams, one of the most famous Asian street foods. We gotta get Andrew one. Andrew loves the purple yams, oh my man. Gosh. Look at it. Just... I am a purple yam. Yeah, sweet yeah, potato. Yes. You don't understand what I'm saying yet, but you will soon. Look, they have Don Tot here and the curry puffs. All right, so pretty much they have everything. This is 99 Ranch Bakeries. Shout out to 99 for doing new things because they are trying to adapt with the times. Come over here, David. They even do these egg sandwiches. Oh, watch out. These egg sandwiches kind of look like. Um, I think they're based off the Korean or Taiwanese style egg sandwiches, but anyways, either way. And they got the hot food station oh, over oh, there. The come food, on, the hot food station. Here. They got some. Okay, they said they got chili oil dumplings, but they don't got this chili oil. Anyways, they got hot food here. Oh, honestly, there's so much food, I don't even know what to buy, bro. They have dim sum here, dim sum on the go. I know David can appreciate an eel You got Unagi right? here. Shout out to Unagi, they also make good scooters. But that's a different unagi. Guys, we're in a mall right now. You can buy Coach, you can buy some Gucci shoes, some Louis shoes over at the Nordstrom's down the hall. But we're at 99 Ranch and we just left their bakery. What do you got? You got the, this is I the I got the yam. yam and the purple yam. No, the sweet potato, one oh, of them so is sweet potato. This, this is the sweet potato. Yo, bust it open. Just rip it away. Yeah. That's the sweet potato. Okay, it's a little dry inside, but let me eat this part. Let me test it. I'm a sweet potato fiend. Warm, kind of dry though. Oh. See, there you go. Your favorite. Thank you. Thanks for peeling uh, that for me. You peeled, peeled off the skin. <laughs> purple yam. Go with the purple yam. All right. I gotta try the chicken bao. Wow, mm. my fingers are off. Of Look it. at that mushrooms. I see the pepper, I see the chicken, I see some scallion. You want to bite? Oh, yeah, this is a staple see, dish. This man. looks like my what childhood you want. here. This is here, what you know? want. I knew Nelson you know, would like this. All right. I like the buns, you know. Mmm. Good. Oh. A lot of white pepper, mushroom, chicken. Love it. Love. Guys, I just want to let you know this video is not sponsored, but shout out to 99 Ranch because they were our very first brand deal in the 626. They paid us in gift cards. Let's go inside <laughs> of this brand new 99 Ranch. And I just want to talk about how big of a deal this is because this is probably the nicest, newest 99 Ranch I've ever been inside. And it's at the mall. And this mall is a good mall. So. Come on, come on, come on, yo, yo. They selling durian. Hurry in, they're selling durian. Authentic taste effortless. Shoot it like stepfordless. I mean, look how nice this guy is. Like, look at these tanks here. Shrimply delicious. Oh my gosh. The gooey ducks are drinking pure aquafina water right now. The geo duck, bro. Yeah, gooey duck. No, it's, you say gooey duck. You seriously think it's geoduck? 
Leave it in the comments down below on how to pronounce Geo that. Geoduck. I don't know. We, we, right. we, we grew up saying Geoduck. I know. I grew up saying it the right way, though. Okay. Trust me. Anyways, leave it in the comments down below. <laughs> Guys, you got hot pot items right here. You got all the sashimi. You got the meats. Hey, uh, your favorite part, meats. Let's go get the check out. We meats. got the meats. A5 Japanese Wagyu ribeye, one hundred thirty dollars per pound right here. A5 Guys, at the mall. Have you seen a 99, David, behind the camera, have you seen a 99 Ranch with Wagyu? No, exactly. So anyways, guys, overall my uh, overall take is that, you know, I think 99 Ranch is trying to, you know, evolve into the next generation of what, you know, people want to shop at and shout out to them. I'm happy and I'm hopeful because I grew up going to 99 Ranch. That was my first, you know, that's the first big Chinese supermarket chain. So uh, it's clean, big, looks nice, looks fun. Prices are still good, even though it's at the mall. I mean, honestly, this might, for hot food, this might be still the best food deal in the mall. 100%. So, anyway guys, let us know if you've been to this 99 Ranch at Arcadia Mall. All right, everybody. We come to the end of our 626 crawl. We've checked out a lot of new places and it's so great to see how many new concepts are opening up, all the fancy stuff, all the, you know, Pan-Asian stuff, whether it's Korean or Japanese or Chinese from a different region. But do not ever forget about what you come to the 626 for and that's chill chow food. Guys, we're here at Noodle Cafe. This is the legendary one. But you can go to Mike's new or Sam's Noodle House. You can go to all these other chill chow noodle spots because this is what the 626 does best. Even in New York City, I gotta admit it, the Chiu Chow restaurants are not the same and there's not that many of them. You got beef stew, you got the Chiu Chow Chomin with a little bit of pieces of liver and the fried onions and the soup. I put it inside. Come on, you got the satay beef. Guys, come to Chiu Chow noodle spots. Keep going.